Shira, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of Sacred Heart Catholic Church here in Richmond, Texas. Let's go! and especially the Holy Mass. First thing I'm going to show you is where, we keep, where the priest keeps his vestments. These are for the priests and deacons. Here we have some alps. This is the white, uh, uh, the white tunic type thing that they wear. And there's various chasubles. They come in uh, various colors, white for celebrations of big feasts, green for ordinary time. Uh, we have some purple ones here over here. Uh, they might keep them in a, another place. Purple is for Advent and Lent. These are stoles. The priest are all this stole is a long, the long thing the priest wears over his front, which he also uses for uh when he hears confession, it's purple. And we have one I see here, pink. It's worn only two days out of the year. Once in uh, in the towards the end of Advent and once towards the end of Lent, meaning Christmas and Easter are coming near. Also, we have some of the holy vessels for the mass. Here we have the plate that the priests use at mass to hold the Holy Eucharist, the bread. It's called a paten. This is a golden chalice. It holds the wine which becomes Jesus's blood. There are two glass cruets. One holds the wine and one holds the water. During the mass, the priest will pour all the wine in and just a little tiny drop of water. This is normally full of bread. The priest confects the Eucharist and it all becomes the body of Christ and he or the Eucharistic ministers distribute it to the faithful. You see, we have many saboriums. They 
because we often have a lot of people here on Sunday night. Let's see what's in this cabinet. Ooh, it looks like we have various chalices and ciborium. And this right here is a little pix. A pix holds one host, maybe more, one or two hosts for the of the Eucharist, which someone can bring to someone who's maybe sick and in the hospital and is unable to receive Jesus in Holy Communion at Mass. Oh, also, we have various palls. These are like little cloth cards, and the priest puts it over the chalice at Mass. And I'm not really sure why. That's something I'll have to look into. I think it's maybe so flies and bugs don't go in there. Now here we have a little sink and refrigerator area. In the refrigerator are hosts. It keeps them fresh. Little ones and big ones. And even altar wine. To celebrate Mass, a priest has to have wheat bread, hosts, and grape wine. Now, when a priest celebrates Mass, he has to have purificators. These are little cloths that he uses to clean out the paten and the chalice. After it's used, it goes in this clear glass container because it might have drops of Jesus's precious blood or even crumbs of the Eucharist. So we want to treat them very carefully and special. There's someone called a sacristan who takes care of all this stuff. They're specially trained to know how to do this. They clean those uh, cloths of the altar, not down this regular side of the sink. In the church, Catholic church, there's a special, I don't know the name of it, but it's a sink the hole goes down, not to the sewer, but into the earth. So that just in case there's a little drop of Jesus's precious blood or precious body, it goes down into the earth and we can bless it and um, become one with it there, uh, but not into the sewer. So we give special honor to Jesus in that way. Okay, there's a few more things in the sacristy that are interesting. One is this. A giant safe. I don't really know what's in there. It could be where they, when people give offering money at the church, we keep it in here until it can be take, taken to the bank to use to help support the church and the poor. I'm not sure, but it's a big safe. Here we have a bookshelf with missals and lectionaries, which are the books used at Mass that have words of the Holy Bible, words of the Mass, and of other rites that we do. There's a beautiful processional cross, which we carry to start Mass and liturgies. And this is one side of our old confessional. This is the side where the priest goes in. Right now it has some cleaning supplies. We're not using it because of COVID. Normally the priest would sit here wearing his purple stole and uh, go this way a little and hear confessions. He, he can't see, he is in the curtain. But there's a door on the other side of the church where you go in and you, you say your confessions. So that's the sacristy. Let's go to the main part of the church. next to it, if you can look closely, you'll see the red sanctuary lamp burning. If it's burning, that means that Jesus is present there in the Blessed Sacrament, in the Eucharist. So we need to show him extra reverence. And one way we do that when we enter the church is we genuflect. That means kneel down just like we would to a special king, because he is our king. As you enter our church, you see this beautiful statue, which was purchased in the past several years from Portugal. Here is Jesus holding a chalice and the Eucharist, about to give Holy Communion. He sees sick. 
make our fun. And here is a box where if you want to drop off money for your offering or to give to the poor, you just slip it in. Behind it is our church's baptismal font. Right now it's empty, not full of water. Because of COVID, it would be too difficult to clean it out so often. So hopefully it'll be flowing with holy water again soon. But this is where babies are baptized. Um, where your parents may have brought you to be baptized. And it's fitting that this is towards the entrance of our church because baptism is the way we become Catholics and enter the Holy Catholic Church. Next to the baptismal font is the Easter candle. This is, we, we light this at Easter, the Easter vigil every year. And it has five nails for the five wounds of Jesus on the cross and the year. 2021 next year it'll be 2022 and when a baby is baptized we light the easter candle and their baptismal candle is lit from the easter candle flame showing that they receive the light of christ in their soul when they're baptized let's go this way i see something else even though we don't have holy water in the baptismal font right now because of covid do have it again in these little these little cups right when you enter church so many times when you enter the church you'll take your holy water remind yourself of your baptism in the name of father son and holy spirit and then genuflect when we do that it cleanses our venial sins this bell i think is for when church is about to start we don't use it very often i don't know why there's a little word this is where we keep the holy oils for the church. We have the chrism. There is one for baptism. There's one for confirmation. I don't remember what this one's for. But there's three different special kinds of oils. Oil of catechumens, chrism oil, and it'd be good to find out the other ones. We will find it. Here we have a picture of the Holy Family. Father Joseph was pointing out, these are motion detectors. When the church is closed and the alarm's on, if anything moves, the alarms will go off. Okay. Let's see what we should do next. Okay. I see something. Up here. These are the stations of the cross. They actually begin way over here. There are 14 of them. Each one shows a different moment on Jesus' journey to the cross, from the time he was arrested to the time he was laid in the tomb. So I'm really excited for Lent to come to take all the kids in our faith formation program to do the Stations of the Cross. We might do it in our old church. More about that later. Let's go this way. Right here. We have beautiful stained glass windows in our church. When you enter the church here, these are all different titles, names of Jesus. This one is the Prince of Peace window. Here we have Jesus' crown and the Cairo, which means is from the Greek word Christ. So Jesus is King and the King of Peace. If we give our hearts to him, we receive peace. This one is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Here we see the world and a big candle almost like the easter candle coming up and giving light to the whole world jesus is the light of the world he is also this one the lamb of god jesus like a lamb in the old testament who was sacrificed jesus gave his life but he died and rose again and here he's holding a flag of victory with the cross on it to the other side, see the other Jesus. When I cross in front of the altar, I always give a little bow to show that that's a place of reverence because Jesus is sacrificed there for every mass. Bread of life. In the Eucharist, he 
gives us eternal life. Here we have symbols of the Eucharist, the bread and the grapes and the cross and the wheat. shepherd's staff. So Jesus takes care of us just like a shepherd. And finally, Jesus is a fisher of men, just like a fisherman who catches fish. Jesus wants to bring all of us into the big net of the church where we can all receive salvation. So here we have a cross, a brown cross, coming out of a big boat. And there's little crosses down here, almost like, you know, like Jim, almost like, they see them down here? Almost like the, the fish are little Christians going to be gathered up into the boat of the Holy Catholic Church where we can receive salvation. So right here, this is the door, which is not usually open. It just says storage. I call this the usher's closet. Is the usher's going here a lot? The ushers are the men and women who help people sit down and know where to go and uh, take up offerings during church. So you see here, there's their name tags, all the ushers' name tags. When you grow up, you could be an usher too. There's also baskets that the ushers use to collect the offerings, bulletins to hand out, and some other random stuff. been in this room right here before it's called the cry room it's where mommies can take their babies if they're crying or little kids or if you can sit when there's nowhere else to sit there's a picture of flying babies <laughs> i'm not sure who did that painting but it's very interesting i think it's a picture of what she imagines it's like babies who go to heaven you see jesus taking care of them there where we receive Holy Communion. Some people like to receive kneeling, and that's why there's kneelers. You see Jesus there? He's in there. He's in the tabernacle. That means that after Mass, the priest, Father Joseph and Father Mark, will put any extra uh, confected Eucharist, little bread, in the tabernacle. Jesus is present there, so you could come anytime to pray, to Jesus in a special way because he's really here. We see the crucifix. There's letters up there. It says I-N-R-I. -I. I think that's Latin for Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. That's what they nailed at the top of the cross when Jesus was crucified. At the top, a couple little people in the stained glass window. A dove in a flame, the image of the Holy Spirit. So that's what happens at Mass. The Holy Spirit comes down on the gifts of the bread and wine and turns them into the body and blood of Jesus. Here we have it. the chair, the presider's chair where the priests sit. There's other chairs for deacons, for altar servers. Here we have the lectern where the Holy Bible is read. If you look behind there, there's a thurible, which is used for incense at high mass. It's these, uh, um, it's, uh, it's this um, little rocks and spices that you light and they smell really good. And whenever they use it at mass, the smoke goes up and it's like our prayers going up to heaven. Oh yeah. Altar candles, we have two big ones. All 
altar candles are made out of beeswax. And um, we have to, it has to be lit during mass and it has to be made out of beeswax. Here we have, oh yeah, as I told you earlier, there's the sanctuary candles, the sanctuary lamps. They're candles in, in red, in red uh, covers. And when those are lit, you know that Jesus is really present there in the Eucharist. We also have statues. Here we have Mary and St. Joseph holding baby Jesus. And we have another statue of Jesus, Jesus' sacred heart. And he's holding a ball. It's like he's holding the world or the universe. It shows he's the king of the universe and he takes care of it. We'll look at our, the few other stained glass windows we have. Here we have another little ambo, which is used for announcements and for the, uh, the singers to sing the church. We have an organ. We have a piano. And we have four of these little rectangular windows. And they stand for the four evangelists. That's the four books of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that tell us about Jesus. This one's Matthew. And I'll show you where Luke and John are. There's one. One. And the others are on the other side of the church. Now this window is called window of creation. And we have from Genesis 1 when God creates the waters and the skies and the sun and the earth. And if we look up to the top, you see God's, it's a symbol of God's hand creating the universe, the stars and the moon. I'm going to show you one statue of this one. This is St. Peregrine. He was born in 1260. Pretty sure he was Italian. And he has a little um, wound on his leg. He's the patron of cancer, cancer patients. So if you know anyone who might have cancer, you can pray to St. Peregrine for God to heal them. Jesus, the divine mercy. These are usually by the organ. But I love these. These are altar bells. We ring them at mass, usually the altar server does during the epiclesis, when the, whole, the priest asks the Holy Spirit to come down, and when he says the words of consecration, to turn the bread and wine into Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity. If you notice, each bell has a different size. That means it has a slightly different sound. So when you ring it together, it sounds beautiful. Listen. I'll show you one more statue, one more stained glass window, and we'll go somewhere else. Another image in Our Lady of Perpetual Hope. Here you can see just Jesus' shoe falling off. Here's the John Evangelist window. Now this, I love this, these statues. This is Our Lady of Fatima. Mary came down from heaven in 1918 and appeared to three shepherd children. And they're here. She appeared with her immaculate heart showing, and she asked the children to pray the rosary every day. So you can come visit Our Lady of Fatima anytime. Next to her, we have Lord.
his candles. These are little battery powered candles. Some churches have real candles, but these are safer probably. And if you, if you can, if you could leave a little offering, maybe a quarter or so, you can light a candle. And what you do is you pick it up from the bottom right there. And it's usually people light it for a special intention. Let's say you say, I want God to help me um, be more obedient to my parents this month, or please pray for my grandma who's sick. So you light a candle for a special intention. And then right above it, this is a great place for it, is a little cabinet with some relics of saints. A relic of a saint is a little piece of their hair or, or even their bone. Um, and we that's a special way that we can um, connect with the saint and ask them to pray for us. Here we have Blessed uh, Francis Xavier Silos, St. Cecilia, and St. Faustina. The last big stained glass window we have. This is the resurrection window. So on the other side we have creation, where God created the world, and the resurrection of Jesus, he's going to recreate the world. So here we have the tomb of Jesus, and the stone is rolled away. See the sunrise on Easter morning. And lilies. Jesus was buried in a garden. And we're going to walk this way. And you'll see my oldest daughter favorite little lily. On the way, we're going to pass the St. Luke Evangelist window. If you can see what we're going to do. go with the resurrection window where Jesus is resurrected we have the butterfly window the butterfly is an ancient Christian symbol of resurrection of new life in Christ the little caterpillar goes into his cocoon and is like he dies but he doesn't really die he's being transformed into a new creation just like we are through the resurrection of Jesus so I think now we'll take you to one last spot the church offices. This is normally where people don't get to go, so it's a secret. Let's do it. Welcome to the church offices. This little entryway area is where you can pick up registration forms to become a parishioner, where you can drop off a form for a mass intention if you want a mass sent for your intention. Down here we have non-perishable food goods and toiletries which we're collecting to help out our nearby food bank called Helping Hands. This is the church office. This is Kathy Carter. She is our church secretary. She's always a friendly face to welcome you to say Hi everyone. So we're gonna go into her office. <laughs> Welcome to the church office. So Miss Kathy takes care of registering new parishioners, answering questions, lots of other things. Here we have a TV and it has shows the footage of the cameras. There are secret cameras all around the parish. Here we have the air conditioners, the plaza, and it'll change. You'll see um, the the entrance to the church. Um, there's also for the Family Life Center. So this is to keep everybody safe. Um, Father Joseph can even see it on his cell phone to make sure everything's going okay at this at, at the church. This is a special fireproof cabinet. It holds all the records. It's a very heavy door. It's special records that have when you're someone is baptized, when someone receives um, the sacraments of marriage, confirmation. So um, they're kept here. So uh, we can, if you need that information, we can get it for you. Okay. Let's go this way. Bye, Miss Kathy. Thanks. Bye-bye. This is Miss Karina. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Miss Karina. Hi. Miss Karina is our bookkeeper. She keeps track of all the financial records for Sacred Heart. Very important job. Yes, 
Thanks, Miss Karina. See you later. Okay, this is a very special quilt. It is made from all of our VBS t-shirts over the years. And actually, there's another one down there. We're gonna have VBS this year. So come, here's a picture of our Pope, our current Pope, Pope Francis. Yet another even bigger image of Jesus, the divine mercy. Two very special offices. Father Joseph, our pastor, his office is locked because it has important documents in it. And Father Marks, which is open. He also has important stuff, but he's the, he's the vicar, so. machine and a very special secret passageway. Our new church, which we just had a tour of, is connected to our smaller, older church, which was the original church here that was built, I think, in the 1930s. And they're connected through a little passageway and a little, another little sacristy. Let's go check it out. parish sacristy. Just like the other one, it has the linens and vestments for the priests and uh, clergy to use during the liturgy. This is very special. This, have you ever heard of Eucharistic adoration? That's when Jesus in the Eucharist is taken from the tabernacle and put in a special stand called a monstrance. This is a big one. Look how big a giant host is put there. And they bring it to the altar and put it on top of this beautiful stand. You see the angels holding it up? And there you can come and pray and be with Jesus and actually see him in the Eucharist. It's a very special way to pray. I'll also show you this stained glass window because it's right here. Mary, the mother of the church. Beautiful. And we're just going to take a peek at the old church. Look. Another tabernacle. And the sanctuary lamps are burning. That means Jesus is here. So I'm going to genuflect again. So this is our old church. We'll do another tour another day. It has more beautiful stained glass windows, even a, a choir loft. You have to get two with stairs and some beautiful windows. So we'll do that tour another day. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour. I hope you loved it. And I hope to see you again soon at Sacred Heart.